Hello, magical friends. Welcome back to Psychic, Psychic Couple, Couple Reacts. Reacts. I did it. <laughs> we did it in sync. Yeah, finally. We'll do about 3,000 more times. We'll get it perfectly. Uh, we'll try it in harmony next time. Right? With music and drums. And like... <laughs> you definitely like to take it, like, go extra with it. I know. Um, well, I hope you guys have been enjoying these episodes. We love it. And um, welcome we just to our, can't get enough. Yeah, yeah, welcome to our living room. And we're going to be watching our favorite paranormal shows with you guys i'm psychic medium trans channel riz the Wiz, and i am lady o intuitive empath and this is where we get to sit down with you guys grab your popcorn your crystal sage light a candle lower yep. the lights and get cozy with us as we dive into um an episode of a show called paranormal 911 you want to talk about what this episode is about yeah so this woman this elderly woman keeps hearing children playing outside of her house this is her childhood home and she was having an emergency the first responders came to her house and while they were there they also heard children at 2 30 in the morning playing outside her house so we're gonna drop in on yeah the first responders calls this show is about the true stories of these first responders who have had paranormal surprise occurrences yeah. when they go do these visits, okay? Yeah. And sometimes it's a crime scene. Sometimes it's someone has a medical emergency. And this stuff is not in their handbook, though I think it should be in their handbook. And by the way, we custom pick these episodes yeah. because there's many we go through that we're like, yeah, right. There's a lot we don't believe mm -hmm. that we can tell, we can feel, we can intuit, we can psychic it, and we can tell when this is not real right. for the person saying it. And you can just see the video footage. So for us to choose one episode, sometimes we have to look through 20, 30 episodes of various sorts all over the internet. And thank you for sending us your suggestions. Keep doing that. Please mm -hmm. send us ones that you'd like us to deconstruct. But um, yeah, we're we're really hyped about this one. This one's really scary. Well, this one is interesting to me. I don't know if I'm gonna get through it quietly. <laughs> This one is well, that's a little nerve the point is, Yeah, sometimes when we're dropping in, and if you guys watch these episodes, we like to kind of lay back with you because I noticed a lot of reaction videos, they're talking over songs, movies, commercials, whatever it is they're talking about, they're talking over. So we like to kind of lay back. We do say some comments during. We stop if we have something to say. So hopefully you guys appreciate that, that we want you to be able to watch these shows without too much interruption so you really get the story. Yeah. Now, um... Without further ado, let's yes, get so into let's Paranormal in. 911, Children of the, the Barn. Oh, these are the opening segments, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's... Okay. Children, do you know I can't come out to play? play. Enough of this. Enough. See, I'm Enough. I'm scared. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. oh, no. This is medical alert dispatch. A fall head has been triggered near your address. Can you hear me? This is medical alert dispatch. A fall pad has been triggered at your address. Can you hear me? Those fall pads are interesting. I didn't know they existed. I I'm sending That's an awesome. ambulance to your address. Medic 64, priority 2. One old mill road. Somebody still lives out there? Medic 64, copy. Patient has fallen and triggered an emergency contact. Has since been unresponsive. Female, 82 years old. Medic 62, on our way. These guys in these small towns know Shortly after 3 certain a. residences. Mm -hmm. Emergency medical technician Ed Lively responds to a 911 medical call. I became a first responder uh, when my grandfather passed away in my front yard right before I graduated from high school. Wow. 
That was his calling. I went through EMT school so I can help people, help them in the darkest times when they need. And his last name is Lively. An elderly woman has triggered a fall that automatically what? dials How does that happen? But <laughs> Talk about that's that's soul destiny. contract it's destiny. Oh my God. When an elderly person calls 911, it's more urgent. They will just go downhill very quickly due to the age. The mm -hmm. older they get, the more urgent it is with them. I was blessed these people for doing this job. Mm -hmm. Up at out all hours of the night. Mrs. Taylor? Mrs. Taylor, paramedics! Although his partner appears unaffected, Lively begins to feel some sort of presence around him that he can't yet explain. It's completely dark, and I start getting these eerie feelings like something's out of place. Something does not feel right. Mm. Like you said, yeah. empathic by nature. Hello? Yeah. Mrs. The best Taylor. ones are. Mm -hmm. right? Mrs. Taylor, paramedics. It's not just a job off. for them. And it's not I had just an eerie coming into like a regular I was being situation. Watched, but I knew I had a job to do. Ed, over here. Mrs. Taylor? Mrs. Taylor, paramedics. Please. We're here out. Nice and slow. Mm -hmm. We're almost there. there. Okay. Poor okay. thing. Right. Like very slow, slow. Okay. And we're there. The first impression I saw of the woman was like, you could obviously tell that she was having a hard time breathing and everything and just having some discomfort in her chest. Mrs. Taylor, I'm Ed. This is my partner, Tanya. Did you have a fall? We was trying to talk to her and we was getting her vitals. We did a manual blood pressure on her so we know about where her blood pressure is at. Do you have a history of heart problems? I was just a little bit dizzy and I fell down. Did you have chest pain when you fell? It's nothing, okay? Hmm. But then I start hearing stuff outside. He started hearing stuff outside. <laughs> you okay, Brothers partner? dropped in. <laughs> or Ted. He's Did in you the hear frequency. something? Never mind. And I didn't know what it was at first. I just just kept hearing it, kept hearing it. Well, partner your doesn't vitals hear are it. really good, Mrs. Wow. Taylor. Once we started talking to her and telling her, hey, your vitals are good, your blood pressure's great, she told us, like, hey, I don't want to go to the hospital. I'm fine, OK? I really don't need you here. Thank you for coming, OK? Oh. Oh, OK. Although his patient is medically sound, Corner of his eye. has a growing suspicion of peculiar activity I on this farm. The of my eye all so the time. he buys time. Uh, all this the time. Is really the reason for that, too. Farmhouse, Mrs. Taylor. We didn't think anybody lived out here anymore. Just me and all my old memories. <laughs> and that's when we heard the laughter even more. We. we. We heard Did the laughter. Did you hear that? That I heard. That I heard, she said. Three people hear it. Okay. It sounded like there were kids running around. Disembodied voices. And I thought that was strange because it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Like, what kids will be outside playing at this time of day? None. Right. You know, looked around, there's nobody around, there's, but I just got an eerie, like, even stronger eerie feeling and just kept building up, like, something was not right. And it was making me starting to feel uncomfortable. Back inside the house, Lively continues to track the perplexing sounds of children. I looked at our patient, I went, man, why is your grandkids outside playing at 3 o'clock in the morning? And she looked at me dead serious in the face saying, I have no grandkids. There are no children here. And there's no kids here. Those two are so good, I just have to say, in the yeah. middle of his out warning. <laughs> They're so convincing. The mysterious sounds of children's laughter. So maybe they're thinking to blood she has dementia or something, so they have to go check. Absolutely. Terror. I was really confused because I didn't know what was going on. Do you have any neighbors or kids who'd be checking up on you or playing in the field? Concerned that the unseen children wow. could be in a life-threatening situation, 
That's a very Lively distinct sound. Children the source laughing, of the sound. playing. I knew right then something was really not right. I'm on so, edge thinking that there's that's somebody where he's out getting there. The feeling. He has to go look for them, right? Yeah. He has now to. Now he has to. What the hell? Oh my god. Pause there. Just give me a Ed Lively. First of all, I have to say that what the hell was as if we were really there. I know. That man that is, real. he's amazing. He he's not even an actor. So real. Good that's actor. exactly the way you would say what the hell yeah. in that moment. It's like a it's like I'm um impressed. A, a, a quiet scream. Right. 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 So now he's having okay, so he has audio disembodied voices. We call that auditory evidence. Mm -hmm. Now he's having spectral, which means he's having visual right. contact. Right. Some from that it seems like the kids some kids are at the window. Yep. So he's not afraid. Oh, he becomes afraid. Well, yeah. I mean, he's compelled at this point. He has to get to the bottom of this. Because think about it. He's now in a small town. it's not even town. about the elderly woman anymore. Now he has to actually see what is going on. Because is there really children outside at Well, if there are children outside, he definitely doesn't think that they're ghosts at this moment. He's thinking, right. think about it, small town in Tennessee... He's not like he's not in the hood where you would think somebody goes for on a call and goes, I'm a little scared here. Yeah. It's a dangerous neighborhood. Right. This is an old lady on a farm yeah. in Tennessee in a neighborhood that these guys apparently know because they're like, oh, that old farm. Somebody yeah. still lives there. Right. So he's not coming from a, a sphere that is about violence. Right. This is an uncanny feeling happening to him. Right. All right. Let's. OK has responded to a 911 call racing to a secluded farmhouse in the middle of the night I was just a little bit dizzy secluded while treating the elderly patient <laughs> I start hearing stuff outside he's surrounded by mysterious voices you okay there partner <laughs> or it's Ed the voices sound like children's laughter the turn to screams of terror. Shit. And after following the disembodied voices, he's confronted with a chilling sight. Sight. What, what the, the hell? hell? So he what saw that. What appears to be apparitions of children outside the farmhouse. He visually it literally saw felt it. like Contact. my stomach and my heart just dropped out my body. And like someone just dumped a bucket of ice cold water all over me. Ed, what's wrong? There, there were children out there. Oh but as quickly God. as they appear, they're gone. Now, in fear for the lives of these children, Lively is determined to search the dark corners of the farm for signs of life. Yeah, let's go so, search the dark corners of the so farm. That's what you want to do when yeah, you're he's terrifying screams. But he's convinced laughter. they're real. Again. I'm looking around. But I don't see him. I don't see him anywhere. What's going on? Hello? You know, he came there just to Anybody help a woman get here? back up and to make sure she's okay. Now this is what's I'm still calling out going to him. down. Mm -hmm. Trying to get their attention to come to me. Letting them know, hey, I'm an EMT. I'm here to help. Come speak to me. Hello? Are you there? While Lively searches for any signs of human life outside. Do you need assistance? I think Do I know you exactly. need assistance? Is the question. I think I know exactly how this is the happening. The dark history of this place. This is I have to tell you the story. Years and years ago, my friends used to come over and play in the barn. They wanted me to play hide and seek, but I couldn't because I have a bad leg. Hello? Okay. Anyone there? <laughs> Paramedic! Come get me! These voices are moving, they'd play okay? In the hay, they'd make forts. I'm over here! And then one day, there was a terrible accident. All smothered to death right in front of my eyes. They were crushed by the hay. Those are very, very heavy, by the way. You know, you mean you were spent time on the farm growing mm -hmm. up. 
the disturbing sounds of children lead lively directly to the source of the past tragedy. I have some things the to Okay, let's get into it. You want to pause it? <laughs> you know, just one second. Let me see. I didn't know what was going on, what was causing this. And all I see is hay bales. It wasn't making any sense to me at all. Hello? Anyone there? Oh, here we go. They can't leave. They're trapped in this mm. horrible nightmare. He's walking into okay. the eye of the storm so here's here. here's my idea. They're trapped, she says. Mm. So this means that she has been listening to these children for years and years. Oh, right. I have right. more to say. Right, because she's more 82. Say. And this happened when she was like you. seven. Yes. Oh, God, so wow. So here's what I think could be happening. Mm. And this is not in all cases. But in this particular case, I believe this is like electromagnetic, like a record player that gets recorded. A psychic imprint. It's a psychic imprint on a loop mm. because she is still attached to the events. She's still there. She's still terrified and still feels horrible about what happened to her friends or whatever wow. her emotions has those electromagnetic frequencies, those sound like a uh, recording. Mm. It's like... It's like over and over. It's imprinted into the energetic field. And since she has stayed, there's been no cleansing. There's been no clearing. There's been no other families. There's have been come no in. emotional processing for her. No. So what we're looking at, guys, and when we talk about psychic imprints, there are hauntings that are, one would say, real-time hauntings. And then right. what I like to call them and what are also called psychic imprints. So just like when you get up from a couch, you leave an imprint from your your weight on the couch, the couch will be kind of shaped to your body. You might say that's an imprint. Now multiply that by 10 million, but bring it in the spirit world. So when you exist in a particular place, you die in a particular way that leaves a very strong emotional impact to not only you, but others who have watched it happen. Remember, she was an eyewitness. This at a young age, this makes an imprint on her psyche, but it also makes an imprint where a person dies if it was tragic, often there is an imprint, which means it's almost like a video that plays on loop. Notice in some of these classic hauntings, yeah. Western saloons, yeah. there's this classic story of like, yeah. the woman in white appears at the top of well, the balcony, know, and waves and goes back, right? Harry Potter had that. They, oh? Yeah, the, the ghost that would run through the Great Hall and always keep going in that same loop and saying hello to the children. And in every, every movie. It could be, right? So think about it that this is happening and you're just witnessing there's such a strong imprint. It's like even a fragrance can be in a particular place yeah. after you leave if you were wearing a cologne. So it's that same principle, guys, that you, you multiply. So it could be, as we watch, if this is a psychic imprint, maybe we'll find out if it is or not. Let's see. <laughs> but then... That's why I saw it. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. Notice he's compelled. <laughs> that sounds a great that, scream. That scream is too good. I can't get enough of that. I was just shocked. I want that as my ringtone. <laughs> I had no explanation for it. I don't, what I the hell? Think everything reasonable, and there was nothing. These children died a tragic death, but they are in the place where they were happiest. Okay, in their we'll do the commentary here, bro. We're out of here <laughs> now. I was like, okay, let's hurry up, let's get going. I don't want to be here anymore. Mrs. Taylor, we have to take you to the hospital now. I have to stay with my friends. Yeah, but I have to go to the hospital she now. Very <laughs> bent on staying. She did not <laughs> want to go anywhere. Okay. She refused <laughs> and kept refusing, so you can't force everybody to go and she wanted to stay for some reason and not to leave the house <sighs> Thank you, what we're leaving that's when my partner she told me the story of the accident that happened on the farm that's when i knew right then it's like okay this is true She's got a little Natalie Portman woman, thing going I'm on. I'm thinking, yeah. will she be okay? She will she be fine being stuck here with those kids running around, not knowing what's going to happen next? But at the same time, you can't change anything. 
The experience that I had, it opened up my eyes more realizing, okay, there's more to this world right. than what we know. Thank you, good. Sometimes that's what I'll it takes. I'll never leave you. I couldn't save you, but I'll never leave you. So she's probably been so saying that So I feel like she does have a connection to the kids. 60 years is a long time for a little girl to wait to play with her friends. Hmm. Every now and then when I go through that area, I get that same eerie feeling, and I know those kids are out there playing. I'll see you one day. It won't be long. It won't be long. Oh, wow. Just wait for me. Just wait. I couldn't even oh, imagine that happening. sweetie. After the patient passed away, there have been no further reports of paranormal activity on the farm. Okay, Wife so now switched roles in his department and now works as an EMT dispatcher. So okay. She took it with her. Okay, so it could be a combat well, maybe it wasn't a psychic imprint, because maybe they were just waiting for her, keeping her company. Her I her think, trauma I think was magnetizing this is where them. In? You and I are going to actually differ a little. Oh, really? Bit. You so, think yeah. it still was a psychic imprint? I do. I think that when she left, she left with the imprint, and I think that that recording. Oh, was right. That could be that. You're and right. Her belief system. And I didn't when think she of that. Left. It went with her. Because how many times, like Amityville, the spirits stayed behind for the next family? Yo, you talked about Amityville, honey. That's like that was <laughs> guys. Amityville messed me up. I. <laughs> Uh, we moved into a, okay I'll just really quickly when we moved into our house when I was a kid in this old house that my parents moved into um, somehow that book ended up the Amityville Horror book ended up I read that book at like nine years old which definitely is that not a good was idea not a good idea but we maybe we should dive into Amityville one day but it's a little gruesome I don't know how I feel about that um, well the point is that those spirits stayed yeah they did and also we've never discussed this before but spirits like ourselves and many other spirits also we can fragment kind of like a kaleidoscope so we can fragment out that's a whole different topic diff different conversation if you go to our main youtube channel mm -hmm. uh go through some of the channeled material when riz channels spirit guides and they have talked about fragmented souls yeah. when our spirits fragment for example they talk about how some animals are very much more human-like than other pets, right? You've had many pets, and then some pets do almost display this human expression in their face, and those yeah. are soul fragments, metaphysically speaking, right. which was what which we do is, here. It's very human-like. They yes. have like a consciousness. So imagine taking a fragment of you, yes. consciousness, intelligence, yes. and bringing it into that, right. into being. So remember something, guys. When we are, you know, the human being is more... People think uh, of us as instinctual, like animals are really not as instinctual. Instinctual, We are more conceptually minded beings than the animal world. And so the fragment souls that choose to be a part in a certain animal, they are also experienced sometimes in, in a paranormal experience. Yeah, so what, what were you talking thinking. about? What you think what was happening I think, here? I think Amityville um, has a um, fragmented soul situation because there were six family members, right? Right. Who were killed. So those six family members, I'm not convinced, did not meet their spirit guides, their family on mm -hmm. the other side and moved on. However, because of the tragedy and the nature of it and right. the fact that it was a family member. Oh, I agree. Them, I agree. I don't think it's them haunting that house. Fragmented Absolutely, but I agree. Left a fragmented portion of themselves there. It's not simply just a recording, like a psychic. No, imprint, no. Like but this particular episode. This is not a portal situation. I think Amityville might be a portal situation because that was in Long Island, New York. That is also Native American ground. They did find that there were some Native American rituals that were done on that land, and but we'll get into that another time. I think this is really quite beautiful that. She made that connection of returning to them. That's why there's no more activity there. Yeah. It is a conclusion of an emotional an emotional resolve happened. It took yeah. her death to do it. Right. I do believe she could have done this emotional resolve yeah. with the right shaman, the right, right. Uh, intuitive empath working healing, with her. Of course. Yeah. So 
Wow. Wow to this show. <laughs> Guys, leave us your comments and um, thank you for joining us. And don't yes. forget to click like and subscribe. We love hearing from you. And until next time. See you later. Keep Bye. it spooky.